Hello and welcome to this week's teaching. This week we're going to be talking about the heart of prayer, part one. And over the course of the next two weeks, we're going to share with you 10 biblical keys to transform your prayer life. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Midweek Refill. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and do hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. In this week's subject, we're giving you the first half of the heart of prayer as we talk about 10 very important principles that can literally transform your prayer life. We're going to be talking about what every believer should know about prayer. Well, to begin with, here is point number one. Prayer is essential for a believer's life. Again, prayer is absolutely essential for a believer's life. A believer has to understand the necessity as well as the value of spending prayer time with God. Let's look at what the scriptures teach us concerning this valuable tool God has given us called prayer in the believer's life. The word of the Lord teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, a very short phrase here, but so powerful. It says, pray continually, pray continually. And I love etymology, and I also love to pay close attention to punctuation as it relates to the scriptures. And in this verse, we see a period here. That means pray continually continually, period. In other words, when we understand the fact that prayer is essential for believers, then we will not wrestle with the reality that we must pray continually. So prayer is literally the lifeblood of a believer's relationship with God. Prayer is at the center and circumference of our connection and connectivity to the Most High God. And therefore, it is essential that we pray and that we pray continually. But not only is prayer the lifeblood of a believer's relationship with God, prayer is also the means through which we communicate with our Creator. We express our thoughts to God our desires, as well as our gratitude to God through the vehicle and tool he has given to us called prayer. So it is through prayer that we communicate with God, that we share our concerns, as well as our troubles, as well as those things for which we are grateful, those things that for which we are utterly consumed, and we also are able to express our thoughts to God, and not only our thoughts, but our desires from God, as well as our gratitude to and for God. And again, it is through this powerful vehicle, this powerful tool called prayer. This is what makes prayer an essential part of the believer's life. In addition to prayer being the lifeblood of a believer in terms of our relationship with God, as well as prayer being the means through which we communicate with God and express our thoughts and our heart's desires and our gratitude to God. Also, continuous prayer means maintaining an ongoing dialogue with God throughout the day in all circumstances. Now, there are a great many people who pray only when they need something. They treat God like a spare tire. They only pull him out when there is an emergency situation. But let me tell you, 
When you treat God and prayer like a spare tire, you run the risk of being in an emergency situation and having a tire that is no good. You see, our lives have to be cultivated with God. Prayer is that cultivating mechanism that keeps us connected with God. Think about it like this. When you maintain your vehicle, your tires, etc., when something happens, then it's going to be easier for you to get back on the road. Prayer works the same way. It must be continuous. It must be something that we do often, frequent. We should frequent time with God. And that simply means, again, maintaining an ongoing dialogue with God. And please notice that phrase, dialogue. Anything that begins with co, like communication, or di, di, as in dialogue, means that it is a two-way street. It's dialogue with God, not monologue. Monologue means only one party is talking while everyone else is the audience who listens and never responds. Prayer is an ongoing, continuous dialogue with God that we must maintain throughout the day, and not just in the worst of times, but in every single circumstance. I like to look at prayer as we look at Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, whenever the router is on and the service is working, There's constantly a signal that is being sent out, that is bouncing around in the atmosphere. But if you do not connect to that Wi-Fi, then you do not have access to the information and the power that is available at your fingertips. Well, the same is true as it relates to continuous prayer. The Lord is always available. His spirit is always moving, always around us. But if we do not avail ourselves to the power of the Wi-Fi called prayer, we will miss out on the information God wants to share. We'll miss out on the blessings God wants to bring. We will miss out on an ongoing dialogue. That's you talking to God and God talking to you throughout the day. And when we maintain our prayer life, we can experience consistent connection, consistent connectivity, consistent communication with God that can literally be life changing. And so again, This first point is that prayer is essential for believers. In addition to those truths, prayer also signifies a heart that is always seeking God's presence and guidance. That's why a prayer life is essential, because it is represents the fact that that is a heart that is pursuing God at all times, always seeking God's presence and God's guidance. Now, hear me clearly, because we can't always be in praise and worship, and often we uh, use the word presence or God's presence in a very limited way. We often only think of God's presence in terms of the spirit being high in a worship service. But you want God's presence when you go to work. You want God's presence when you go to court, to school, when you're looking for the right decisions in your life. God's presence, God being with you, leading you, speaking to your heart, and giving you what you need, is the right setup for success in life because from the presence of God comes the guidance of God. 
That is, if you will both listen to him and allow him to lead you. I often see on the vehicles of individuals a tag or a bumper st sticker that will say, Jesus is my co-pilot. And so often I am tempted to try to wave them down and flag them down to tell them that they need to take that bumper sticker off their car because Jesus does not need to be our co-pilot. He needs to just be the pilot all by himself. And he wants to lead us. But the question is, are we open to the signal? Think of prayer, again, as that wireless connection between a smartphone and its service provider, whether that be AT&T or whomever you may have. The provider and the wireless phone have to be connected. It has to be connected to the tower. And just as a phone needs a constant connectivity to function effectively, believers need continuous prayer to stay connected to God spiritually. Just as the tower is needed and the service is needed for the phone to access information, to communicate with other people, watch this, to pay bills, to do banking online. Likewise, we need the connectivity to God through prayer in the very same manner to be able to do everything we do and do it well. So here's an everyday application. Set specific times during the day for prayer, such as morning, midday, or even evening. Even use reminders on your phone to prompt you to pray, ensuring that the day is punctuated with moments of communion with God. And here's number two. Pray with faith. Pray with faith. Let's look at what the scriptures teach us concerning praying with faith. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22 in the New International Version read like this. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Praying with faith is so important to the life of the believer because it means that we're trusting that God hears and answers every one of our prayer. You see, there's no need in praying if we're not going to pray in faith. Praying in faith requires believing that God is both willing and capable of responding to our petitions according to his will. Again, believing that God is able and that he is also willing to respond. That's what it means to pray in faith. Consider a child who asks their parent for something, fully trusting that their parent will provide it if it's good for them. Well, this childlike faith is what Jesus is encouraging us to do in our prayers. Sometimes we have to wait, but we must ask the Father in faith. When you pray, remind yourself of God's past faithfulness. Keep a journal of unanswered and answered prayers to bolster your faith and to speak scriptures that affirm God's promises over your life. And here's number three, pray with a pure heart. Pray with a pure heart. Now, I love Psalm 66, verse 18, that breaks this down and gives us such clarity concerning the matter of the heart. Because here the psalmist says in Psalm 66, verse 18, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Let's read that again. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. And here what the author is saying is simply this. 
there was sin in my life or metaphorically my heart, the center of my focus. There was sin. But notice this, this word he uses here. He said, if I had cherished sin. So that is to say, if I had loved sin, if I had had a passion for the sin, if I had nurtured, kept, continued, and been captivated by sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. And that is to say, when I prayed. So how valuable is a pure heart as it relates to prayer? Well, it's extremely valuable to pray with a pure heart. Harboring sin can create a barrier between us and God. You see, effective prayer requires a heart that seeks purity and righteousness. Harboring sin can create a barrier between us and God, hindering our prayers. And it is essential to approach God with a repentant heart, seeking his forgiveness and striving to live according to his commandments. Imagine trying to have a conversation through a wall. Well, sin acts as a barrier, much like that wall that you see on the screen. Sin obstructs clear communication with God. Sin creates a barrier that separates us from God. But when we break through the barrier, tear down the walls of sin in our lives, removing sin opens up the way for more direct and effective prayers to God. I want to challenge you to regularly examine your heart, examine your actions, making a conscious effort to align them with God's standards. So our hearts and our actions must be in alignment with the standards of God, and no one else can do that for you but you. So I challenge you to regularly, regularly examine your heart and your actions. And here's number four. Pray with persistence. Pray with persistence. Now, I love this point because we're often told that when we pray, we should pray, leave it, never pray about it again. But the scriptures teach us through the words of Jesus Christ himself that we must have persistence in our prayers. Luke 18 and 1 Jesus says these words, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. That's clear, isn't it? That prayer requires persistence and that God is not offended by our persistence. Persistence simply means that we ask and we believe and we go back and we ask and we believe. And the reason why we continuously ask and believe is because of the fact we know our Father is capable of giving us anything according to his will. So pray with persistence in expectation of a Father who invites you to always pray and who is capable of giving you anything he desires you to have. Persistent prayer demonstrates our reliance on God and our determination to seek his intervention. It shows that we trust in his timing and his faithfulness. When we pray persistently, we demonstrate the fact that we are totally and utterly relying on God and that we are absolutely focused on obtaining his intervention in the situations that we face. When we pray with persistence, we're showing that we trust in God's timing 
And we know that God is a faithful father. Consider a farmer who diligently waters his or her crops every day, knowing that growth takes time. Well, persistent prayer is like this daily watering. Persistent prayer nurtures our relationship with God and our faith in his provisions. Create a prayer list and consistently pray for each item on that list. Mark those prayers requests off as they are answered and as God delivers. And finally, here's number five. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name. We're taught in John chapter 14, verse 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. This is Jesus talking, and he is encouraging, admonishing, urging us to use his name in prayer. Praying in Jesus' name means acknowledging his authority and his access that he provides to the Father. It is a recognition that our prayers are heard because of Jesus' intercession and his finished work on the cross. This principle underscores the power and privilege that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray in his name. Thank you so much for watching. I pray that you got a lot out of this Bible study. And don't forget, check the links in the description below and get the free PDF handout that has discussion questions along with full notes from this week's study. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, give it a thumbs up, and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. This has been part one of the Heart of Prayer. Join us again next week for part two as we share five more biblical keys to transform your prayer life. Until this Sunday at 9.30, you go with God. Thank you.